एवरीवन वेलकम टू माय चैनल डेंटल एच आई एम डॉक्टर भानोचक आई एम स्टार्टिंग ओरल पैथोलॉजी रिवीजन सीरीज इन व्हिच आई विल बी शेयरिंग माय नोट्स विद यू ऑन इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक्स दैट आर कॉमनली आस्क्ड इन एग्जाम सो टुडे आई विल बी स्टार्टिंग विद अ वेरी कॉमनली आस्क्ड चैप्टर दैट इज बेनाइन एंड मैलिग्नेंट ट्यूमर्स ऑफ ओरल कैविटी फ्रॉम दिस चैप्टर आई विल बी स्टार्टिंग विद द फर्स्ट टॉपिक दैट इज क्वामस पैपिलोमा बट बिफोर दैट If you are new to my channel and are interested in dental videos do consider subscribing it and press the bell icon so you don't miss anything. Now let's get started. So today I'll be starting the chapter benign and malignant tumors of oral cavity. As you can see we will cover the benign tumors of oral cavity as well as the malignant tumors of the oral cavity. But for convenience it is further divided into the tissue of origin. so first we will see benign tumors of epithelial tissue origin then pre malignant lesions or conditions of epithelial tissue origin and then we will see malignant tumors of epithelial tissue origin right this is one part then we will see benign tumors of connective tissue origin and malignant tumors of connective tissue origin this is the second part then benign tumors of muscle tissue origin and malignant tumors of muscle tissue origin this is the third and then benign tumors of nerve tissue origin and malignant tumors of nerve tissue origin so today we'll start with benign tumors of epithelial tissue origin in this i'll be starting with squamous papilloma so let's get started now let's first divide this word papilloma into two parts oma means a benign tumor so we are clear that it's a benign tumor then the word papilla means finger like projections so this is a tumor this is a benign tumor a benign tumor that shows papilla that is finger like projections are seen there are finger like projections so the term papilloma since it involves the oral epithelial squamous cells therefore squamous papilloma thus the name squamous papilloma or you can also say oral squamous papilloma now this squamous papilloma it is associated with the human papilloma virus so the cause is hpv human papilloma virus and uh, this papilloma virus it also causes skin lesions that is skin warts is also caused then it is the fourth most common oral mucosal mass as i told you it is caused by the human papilloma virus hpv and the oral squamous papilloma it is caused by usually types 6 and 11 so this can be a viva question that which is the virus associated with squamous papilloma so it is human papilloma virus and which type so it is 6 and 11 type now remember that all hpv lesions are infective but the squamous papilloma has a very low virulence and infectivity rate and does not seem to be contagious right also the squamous papilloma it may be clinically and microscopically indistinguishable from verruca vulgaris or common wart that is seen on the skin so what all we have seen squamous papilloma it is a common oral mucosal mass it is a benign tumor shows papillary or finger like projections then it is associated with the oral epithelial squamous cells it is caused by human papilloma virus commonly type 6 and 11 this is a viva question it has a very low contagious infectivity rate as compared to the other human papilloma virus lesions and squamous papilloma similar lesions are seen on the skin skin which are very contagious and they are called as verruca vulgaris or common wart Now let's see the clinical features of oral squamous papilloma. So it's an exophytic growth. What do you mean by an exophytic growth? Exophytic growth means something that projects outwards from the surface epithelium from which it originates. So as you can see or as I to already told you it projects outwards from the surface and 
it is made up of numerous small finger like projections which result in a lesion with a roughened varicose or cauliflower like surface so as you if you can appreciate this is the lesion can you appreciate the small finger like projections and it has a cauliflower like surface if you can relate both of these so there is roughened cauliflower like surface and there are small finger like projections then nearly always a well circumscribed pedunculated tumor and occasionally cystic now well circumscribed means it is confined to limited area and it is usually pedunculated pedunculated means there is presence of a stalk for example if this is a tumor it is attached with the help of stalk and it is rarely sessile sessile means it is has no stalk it is directly attached so it is usually pedunculated there is a stalk or a peduncle is there then it is painless and it is usually white but sometimes pink in color you can appreciate here in this lesion then intrally most commonly it is seen on the tongue lips buccal mucosa gingiva and palate and in palate particularly the area adjacent to the uvula majority of them are only a few mm in diameter but sometimes measure several centimeters it occurs at any age and are seen even in young children then i already told you the skin analogous of oral papilloma is called as a common wart or verruca vulgaris these are the lesions that look similar to oral papilloma and uh, this can be a viva question that what is the skin analogous of oral papilloma so it is common wart or verruca vulgaris which is a frequent tumor of the skin right it is uncommon on oral mucous membrane but extremely common on the skin now as i told you the oral papilloma was associated with hpv 6 and 11 but this verruca vulgaris or the infective type that is seen on the screen it is usually associated with hpv 2 4 and 40 clinically it looks similar to oral papilloma it is contagious although oral papilloma had a very low cont uh, contagious activity and this one this common water verica vulgaris is capable of spreading to other parts of an affected person skin or membrane by way of auto inoculation that is if somebody is having the skin lesion on the fingers and he puts his uh, finger on the in the oral cavity or on the lips so it will it is contagious and similar lesions will be seen in the oral cavity as well you can see here these are often seen in patients with verruca on hands or fingers and the oral lesions appear to arise from auto inoculation by finger sucking or finger nail biting then sometimes you can be asked what is a cowden syndrome although this is not very commonly asked in this syndrome papilloma like or papillomatous lesions and fibromas of various sites in the oral cavity are recognized and there are multiple hematoma and this cowden syndrome it is considered a cutaneous marker of breast cancer so to summarize the clinical features it is an exophytic growth small finger like projections cauliflower like surface and usually there is a stalk that is it is pedunculated and it is white and sometimes pink in color only few mm in diameter any age and the skin analogous is quite infective and is called as common water verruca vulgaris and which is caused by the hpv 2 4 and 40 coming to the histologic features it is quite characteristic it consists of many long thin finger like projections extending above the surface of the mucosa so there is finger like projections extending above the surface of the mucosa and each is made up of continuous layer of stratified squamous epithelium containing a thin central connective tissue core which supports the nutrient blood supply so 
it is basically made of continuous layer of stratified squamous epithelium and the connective tissue has forms only a thin core and which supports the nutrient blood supply let's see this to this image so if you can see this to this diagram there are, there are thin finger like projections these are the papilla and this is the thin connective tissue core from which contains the blood vessels some papillomas they show hyperkeratosis that is there is increased thickness of the keratin layer although this finding is probably secondary to the location of the lesion so it depends upon the location and the amount of trauma or frictional irritation to which it has been subjected so depending on the location and if, if there is lots of trauma uh, and irritation there will be hyperkeratosis that is thickened keratin layer will be there one of the essential feature and you should know this is proliferation of the spinous cells in a papillary pattern so remember that in squamous papilloma there is proliferation of the spinous layer of the oral epithelium the connective tissue present is supportive stroma only and is not considered a part of the neoplastic element that is the connective tissue is only supportive and is not part of the neoplastic element the main is the proliferation of the epithelium and that too of the spinous cells in a papillary pattern so if you see this diagram you have to draw spinous layer of cells in papillary pattern so as i told you there is proliferation of the spinous cells these are the spinous layer in a finger like pattern which leads to formation of this tumor then sometimes there is presence of basilar hyperplasia that is there is increased in the number of the basal cells and mild mitotic activity may also be seen which should not be mistaken for mild epithelial dysplasia one of the most important question is what are coilocytes remember this thing very nicely what are coilocytes this is a viva question or an mcq or a fill up the blanks question what are coilocytes these are the cells that are infected by the the epithelial cells as i told you the oral epithelium is infected so these are the epithelial cells that are altered by the human papilloma virus that is causing the lesion so these are hpv altered epithelial cells what will they show they will show a perinuclear clear spaces and nuclear pycnosis that is the nucleus will be pycnosed that it will be shrink and around the nuclei there will be a clear space and they are may or may not be found in the superficial layers of the epithelium coilocyte you have to draw it these this is the coilocyte so if this is the cell i am drawing it in an enlarged manner there is a small pycnotic nuclei and around the nuclei there is a clear space which is called as perinuclear halo i have drawn it in a very enlarged manner to explain you you can see this here this is a coilocyte so remember what's a coilocyte and the last thing is the presence of chronic inflammatory cells may be variable will be noted in the connective tissue so this is how it will be present in the slide this uh, in the exam for slide identification if you can appreciate these are small finger like projections these are the small finger like projections and if you can see here this is the thin connective tissue core thin connective tissue core is there so this is squamous papilloma and if i show you to this diagram what all you have to show is you have to show finger like projections there is parakeratinized stratified squamous epithelium there are finger like projections then there is presence of coilocytes then there is a thin connective tissue core so this is all you have to see coming to the treatment and prognosis excision including the base of the mucosa into which the peduncle or stalk inserts right if tumor is properly excised recurrence is rare so you have to remove it completely including the base of the mucosa into which the peduncle or the stalk is inserted 
सो फ्रेंड्स वी आर डन विद द टॉपिक स्क्वामस पैपिलोमा आई होप इट हेल्प्स यू टू प्रिपेयर फॉर योर एग्जामिनेशन एंड इफ देर इज एनी फीडबैक और सजेशन डू लेट मी नो इन द कॉमेंट बॉक्स ऑल्सो यू कैन जॉइन माई व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप द नंबर फॉर द सेम इज मैंशन यू कैन आस्क योर क्वेरीज देयर एज वेल एंड इट टेक्स लॉट्स ऑफ एफर्ट टू मेक सच वीडियोज योर वन लाइक कैन गिव मी लॉट्स ऑफ एनकरेजमेंट सो डू लाइक माई वीडियो सब्सक्राइब टू माई चैनल एंड कीप वॉचिंग थैंक यू